Typically what you get when you look at a smartphone is either a specific niche, meaning it's a great phone for photography, it's a great phone for gaming, it's a great phone for being just an all-rounder, or it's a great phone for music listening. But when you get an Xperia, when you get a Sony device specifically made to encompass all of the experiences that Sony has to offer us from sound, from gaming, from movie watching, from content creation, a whole bunch of different things that you could do with this, you really come to appreciate what the Xperia line is trying to do. This is the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V, the latest edition from Sony that's going to be ushering in the 2023 year with their flagship. This is a 4K 120Hz refresh rate display that we're going to be testing out in some gaming experiences. So without further ado, this is TK and this is the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V. Let's check it out in some gaming tests. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. Starting off with what we have in here, this is the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V. This is the updated version running the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, so just as kind of specifications out of the box. 6.5 inch display, 4K 120Hz OLED panel, 21 by 9 aspect ratio, so you automatically kind of see it's a little bit longer than some of your other devices. Although still wide enough that gives us the one-handed experience and of course we have some nice button configurations in here. Power button with a fingerprint sensor present here on the right volume rocker and a dedicated camera button that if I press and hold it will automatically launch the camera to whatever last mode I was using and we're able to jump in between different experiences video mode and of course photography mode but today we're going to focus on gaming we're going to focus on the experiences you get when you play games on this device namely because this is not only a great camera a great phone and a powerful phone but it also gives you the ability of having a great gaming experience the last thing I do want to mention here, it does have 12 gigs of RAM with 256 gigs of internal storage. And the beautiful thing about it is we actually have the ability of expanding that storage with an SD card up to one terabyte positioned here. Uh, microphone and USB-C on the bottom, stereo speakers here for great uh, audio experience facing us forward. And if you really want to, you can definitely get that zero latency experience personal with the headphone jack that's built in here. And of course, Bluetooth connectivity and all of that that's going to be present in here. We're going to start off first and foremost talking about some of the benefits of using an Xperia over other devices, even other gaming devices that are on the market. First and foremost, we have a nice game launcher. This is called the Game Enhancer. It's a built-in system that not only has been updated, but also provides us more specifications now than we did in the past. Not only first on the temperature, you can see it here on the right, the percentage of the battery, and of course how much water it's using. Last but not least is the frame rate. And that's gonna be important, especially if you wanna be able to get that will at least know that you're playing at the best gaming experience possible. And of course we have the ability of configuring the brightness here with that brightness toggle. Uh, we have the ability of jumping into different shortcuts here, quick access for single shot, multiple shot, video recording, and of course achievements. We do have a built-in gaming mode or this allows us to actually see the performance that we're getting here. There's different profiles presets so you have basically the ability of jumping between uh, performance, balance and of course battery life preferred and of course custom if you'd like to customize it. Uh, preferred is the one that's going to be the one I basically set up most of the time and you'll notice here there's some information again the frame rate the, uh, the RAM usage the percentage on the brightness and of course the, uh, the ROM how much storage you're using in their percentage last but not least of course the configuration here as far as the battery usage some toggle options in there but one of the main benefits that you don't see on most devices on the market is that HS power control now HS power control is very functional because it allows me to use an external power source let's say a USB charging connection let's go ahead and put that here you can see it right there and this allows me to actually use the device, meaning power the phone without using the battery, reducing the generation of heat from the back. Typically when you're using a device and your device starts to warm up, there's two factors in there. There's the processor, which is one factor. The other one is the battery depleting the charge, which means it actually gets drained faster from the juice of the whatever the charge that it's holding, providing us a somewhat of a warmer experience on the back. So combine that with the CPU and the GPU, of course, you're gonna generate more heat. HS Power Control allows me to connect my power source and allows me to bypass the battery. You may see a small trickle charge in there, but basically for the most part, it's not charging the battery and the battery stays cooler, providing you a much better, longer experience without having to worry about it. And of course, last but not least, we still have that new brand new option here that allows us to see the thermals of the device. And we have the ability of releasing RAM and optimizing touch here. All that configuration can be set up there. Uh, we have focus settings, similar to what we've seen them in the past. Of course, display and sound, the ability of customizing the image quality, audio sound, audio equalizer, if you'd like to set that up. Multitasking takes us into the ability of searching the web, YouTube, and other apps if we'd like to be able to do multiple things at the same time. Screenshot, pretty much the same as we had it there, just basically more of a shortcut for it. And the one thing I really, really like is under the recording and streaming, we have a few options available. 
we have the ability of recording and customizing the experience to match the frequency or the basically the refresh rate of the display. 120 hertz refresh rate is the best. I'm gonna go ahead and record at that. Unfortunately, that does drop to 720p. If I go to default, that gets me back up to 1080p. So that's gonna be really, really nice. The other thing I do wanna mention is we also have the ability of streaming directly into YouTube, as an example. You can customize the title, the configuration, the bit rate. You can also go all the way to uh, 1080p, 60 frames per second, customize the thumbnail, and of course, use uh, the capture card output if you'd like to be able to set that up. Audio, priority, all of that good stuff. Uh, all the information here is, is again very very unique to see well to sony devices and it's been on there for quite some time the updates that we've seen here with the xperia 1 mark 5 provide us a definite stronger better experience and the 8 gen 2 gives us that experience to the next level it shouldn't be a surprise if i said that this device performs better than what we had last year the 8 gen 1 with the xperia 1 mark 4 had its own challenges but that was i felt like something to do more with the 8 gen 1 than it did with the xperia 1 mark 4. The Xperia 1 Mark IV did try to compensate for some of the heat generation from the 8 Gen 1. We did have HS power control and they did try to give us that best experience. But again, it was a challenge and it was definitely there. One thing I will say that the Xperia 1 Mark V when we're playing games, Genshin Impact, Call of Duty, PUBG Mobile, I even played uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Shredder's Revenge, that's a free game that you're able to get through your Netflix subscription really nicely. And of course, uh, Undead Horde, because I'd love to be able to see how many uh, cells or how many actual um, active uh, functional things running on the display can run and how hot can we get the device. I will say that the meter on the app, on the Game Enhancer, never once went into the red. It did get a little bit orange when I ran into the, uh, of course, Genshin Impact. As you know, this is a very demanding uh, game and it always gets our devices warm. At the most, for the, uh, well, for the most part, temperatures never went above basically 111 or 110 Fahrenheit. Please understand this is Fahrenheit, not Celsius. Um, it does definitely get warm, but I will say that the configuration of the phone, the way the phone holds, because it is wider, not only does that give us a better field of view, meaning when I'm playing games and I'm holding the phone like this, you'll notice right there, my fingers are sitting in here and the gaming experience is definitely much better and present in front of us. But it also provides us better configuration for the heat dissipation because the heat actually in general, when it does kind of get the warmest, it gets in a little bit more in the center of the phone, not on the side. So when you're holding it, you don't feel as much. On the display, it did definitely get a little bit warm, but again, that's to be expected. We have a bright display, brighter than what we had um, with the Xperia 1 Mark III. It's very similar to the one on Mark IV, so if you have that, that very much there stays pretty much similar there. Uh, the audio performance on the speaker is absolutely fantastic. The headphone jack is absolutely fantastic. This is things that Sony is known for. Uh, the speakers do have new drivers in there, so you definitely will notice a little bit of an improvement audio-wise from the One Mark IV. But if you're looking for the best gaming experience right now, it's hard not to consider the Xperia 1 Mark V because what you're getting there is not just a gaming phone, like a great gaming phone, but also a great content creation phone and a content consumption phone. Again, 4K panel at 120 hertz, the ability of customizing the white balance, uh, also director mode, which allows us to actually get better video presentations, especially for the applications that support it, to get that more of a director view that the movie was intended to be viewed in. I love the functions that we get in here on Xperia devices and they keep improving them year over year. Lastly, if you are a big fan of recording on your device straight from an audio source or from an external source, the monitoring app that we have in here, which again, this works as a 4K monitor over USB-C, allows us to record on device. And this is something that, again, no other device on the market can become a portable 4K monitor recorder for you on the go. So. With that being said, I will say is that the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V is a maverick when it comes down to a lot of the functionalities that we love. Gaming, content consumption, watching movies, listening to music, content creation, editing, producing, uploading, and even content capture because you can now record things from an external source directly onto the device. So my hope is that you found something interesting with the Xperia 1 Mark V and that it intrigues you as a gamer and of course as a uh, just an overall smartphone enthusiast. Like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much for the support. I will see you in the next video.